CNC controllers can rapidly oscillate into chaos. How do you lay out a CNC controller that you could take home to your mother and that won't be plagued with control and logic problems? This video looks at the design and layout of a CNC mill controller that avoids chaos now and control and logic problems in the future. The design and layout of a CNC mill controller requires careful planning to get the best outcomes. Here's what we're going to be covering. Major components, wiring diagrams, electronics, 2D layout, build 3D model, and lay out the backplane. Centroid provide a collection of wiring diagrams that cover most applications, although as some of you have commented, following them can still be pretty daunting. This is the major stuff that I needed to fit in the box. The Acorn controller board and relay board, the motor control cable termination board, an IPC5 power supply for the motors, a 24 volt Acorn logic power supply, a 24 volt power supply for motor logic backup in the fans, an emergency stop switch, a mains power switch, a main circuit breaker, the contactor or high current relay, a couple of cooling fans. Plus you have to add in the wiring, DIN rails, terminal blocks, cable channels, aviation plugs, and a lot more. In the end, you'll end up using multiple wiring diagrams to cover all of your components. In my case, there were two principal diagrams that cover most of the options for my machine. At this point, we are just going to look at the major components on the diagrams for box layout purposes. This diagram turned up in an earlier video as it uses the C86 ACCP board to simplify the motor, power and logic wiring. It is connected to the Acorn board using headers H2 and H3. The relay board is connected to the Acorn using a ribbon cable. The 24 volt DC power supply drives the Acorn, the C86 and the relay boards. The IPC5 75 volt DC power supply provides power to the hybrid servo motors. The generic 24 volt DC power supply is not shown in any of the published diagrams. The shielded ethernet connector is shown here on the Acorn board. This diagram adds the e-stop contactor, a high current relay switch which is used to control power to the motors. The snubber, or a capacitor, for the contactor is shown. Just for reference, this is the mains wiring diagram I built for the power supplies, including the breakers and the main switches. This is the final hand-edited version that we will be using later during the build video. All of the wiring was finally combined into a single diagram that sits inside the control box. Some general principles that will affect the layout and wiring runs later include the AC and DC areas of the control box should be separated as much as possible. The commons from all power supplies must be tied together to prevent floating grounds. The commons and chassis ground must be tied together. The AC earth is also tied to the chassis ground. Shielded ethernet must be used to communicate to the operator console. A DC contactor allows rapid control of power to the motors. A snubber is required on the contactor to eliminate inductive kickback in the circuits when the contactor operates. There are more that I may have forgotten to cover, so drop a comment if there is something that you design into your system or want to ask a question about. When you're thinking about purchasing a controller box, here are some features that I found really useful. A removable backplane makes construction really easy. The poly construction of my box made it easy to drill and cut. Enough depth in the box allows a smaller backplane if other components can be mounted in 3D. A removable door makes for much easier construction. Here's the URL of the company I used for the box that I found, which was fortunately a moderate price. I modeled the enclosure and all of the components in Fusion 360 to optimize placement and validate that everything would fit. There is a lot going on in this print, so I've split it up into several views to simplify things a bit. In this view, the enclosure dimensions are laid out 
and then the backplane size and location are specified, so the spacing around the perimeter for features on the wall can be tested. The location of the hinges and latches are included to make sure there is no interference with component placement. The next view shows the placement of the major components. The right side of the view, which will be the top of the enclosure when it's mounted, is for AC power. The middle is for DC power, and the left side is for controllers and logic. The power supplies are co-located, and the ACORN, relay, and connector boards are placed close to the perimeter of the enclosure to simplify cable access and to limit the interactions between logic and power cabling. The final view shows all the miscellaneous bits that still take up a lot of space. Aviation plugs are placed close to the relay board to allow connection of home and limit switches and other peripherals. The cable channels are laid out to get power and control cables to the various connection points. I use two fans in my enclosure, one on the side for air intake and one on the cover of the enclosure in the opposite corner to get good airflow over the controllers and then to remove the heat from the power supplies, particularly the IPC5 75 volt supply. The main circuit breaker and power switch are located close to the incoming main supply. The 24 volt DC contactor is a large item and needs to be close to the motor power supply cables. The AC and DC power blocks will be a focal point for all of the power cabling. The AC blocks include active, neutral and ground blocks. The DC blocks include positive and common blocks. Finally, the emergency stop is located in the center top of the enclosure cover for easy and prominent access. Building a 3D model rather than just a 2D plan allows the spacing and placement of components to be more effectively visualized. Pay attention to board connections to allow cables to be plugged or unplugged. The fan and emergency stop locations can all be verified for clearance and effectiveness. The cable entry locations, covers and supports can also be checked. With the prints and 3D models in hand, a dry run placement of the components and wiring channels etc. can be tested to make sure everything looks ok. The next job is to mark out the mounting holes and then the components can be fixed to the backplane but we will see all of that in the build video. So, there you have it. A neat and tidy layout that keeps everything in the right lanes and will reduce the potential for crosstalk and interference.